Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is Tuesday, February the 8th. It is 11, 17 a.m. in the morning. Let's start with the sound saying. Coming from Psalms 50, 15, and it says, Come upon, come upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Amen. Come upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. And this is the way it's supposed to go. Whenever God delivers you, you are supposed to glorify him. But this isn't always the case. I like to watch a show called I Survived. There's also another show called I Shouldn't Have Survived. And at the end of each individual sharing their stories, it is the most it is the most impressive moment when, in the end, the individual will say, "God, God was with me." God had his hand on me. God spared me. This is the actual truth. And these individuals are doing exactly what these words say. They are glorifying God for their deliverance. But it is so sad when you hear others say things like, I don't know how I survived. I don't know how I made it. Or they'll say, um, it wasn't my time yet. I made it because of my kids. This, this is that one is a famous phrase they use. I made it because of my children. I made it because of my will. I made it because I wasn't ready to die. Stupidity. That's what that is called. Stupidity. For if it had not been for the Lord, you would not have survived. But instead of giving God the glory, they glorify themselves. So next time they get into a situation like that, God will allow them to do just as they said. Save yourself. But for, for the one who identifies Christ as their strength and anchor at the time they were in distress, when that individual gets into a situation like that again, God will again rescue them. So it is very important to know where your help comes from. Because oftentimes it comes from that who you cannot see. So please remember that he is your anchor. And acknowledge your anchor all the time. So he may continue to be your anchor. Let's repeat this again. Call upon me in the day of trouble. Because the Lord said, because he has acknowledged my name, I will rescue him. I will protect him. Why? Because he acknowledges my name. So every time trouble comes your way, God will be there. But don't be foolish that he may rescue you and you acknowledge him not. And glorify your own self. The next time you get in that situation. Or anything like it. You will be on your own. The back of it is coming from. Oh and that was from Psalms 50. 15. Matthew 21. 22 says. In all things. Whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. Believing. Ye shall receive. What's the key word here? Believing. You must believe that you will receive. 
You must behave like the woman with the issue of blood. She was convinced in her heart that if she just touched the hem of his garment, that she will be healed. So she struggled through the crowd. She fought her way through that crowd and barely touched the hem of that garment. And as soon as she placed her hands upon it, because of the strength of her belief, she did receive what she searched for. And her belief was so strong that it affected the Lord. Many people have touched them, but a believer will touch you. Zapped him. She zapped him. That was how strong her faith was. Okay? And this is what made our Lord stop. To see who had touched him. And out of fear, she bowed down and confessed unto the Lord. Okay? She was just one example of true faith. There was another woman who he insulted, calling her a dog, saying that what he had was not meant to give to the dogs. But her response to him, even a dog takes the crumbs off her, her master's plate. So yes, I'll be your dog and you are my master and whatever you do for me. I will accept. That was a very wise answer to give to the Lord. It showed how strong her faith was in him. The Lord marveled at her response. As he marvels at the response of the one who was saved and says, It was God's hands upon me. And that's how you should be. In every situation, you should always give thanks unto God. For it is through him that you have all that you have. All that you need. That you are not in any lack. Do you understand? All right. Let's repeat this one more time because it's worth doing so. In all things, in and all things, whosoever shall ask in prayer. Whatever you ask in prayer, you must believe that you will receive it. All right? Believing, ye shall receive. So that's the key here. You can't just ask. You have to believe that he is able. To do whatever it is that you're asking him for. Alright. Now. Um, speaking of Christ. We're going to read from the book of Psalms this morning. I do recall skipping Psalms 9. Only because it was one of the Psalms that was very long. It's 20 verses. But before we do that, I'm going to share a little bit of our Lord. It was in my notes. We're back into the red book again. Actually, I have two that we're, we're uh, reviewing. And I still have my marker. Isn't that wonderful? Things are looking up. I'm just going over some of these things that we did yesterday that I did not go over. So, Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth. I'm just going to read a little bit about his beginnings. Sometimes I study and I copy my, some notes for, for whatever reasons. I just start writing. All right, so let's begin. Before I read Psalms, while we're talking about the king of all kings. The king of kings. Yeshua, 
Matthew 118 to Matthew 125. Then I do a little bit of Matthew 2. Uh, Matthew 2, 2 to Matthew 2, 16, and I do skip a few verses here. And these are notes from December 24th, 2019. December 23rd and 24th, 2019. Okay, let's begin. Matthew 1, 18. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise... When as his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 119, then Joseph, her husband being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. He was a very good man, a just man, a righteous man indeed, who loved her. Matthew one twenty. but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call him his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying. These are all uppercase letterings in, in Matthew one twenty three. Behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted as God with us. Matthew one twenty four. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus as he was told. He did not touch her at all during the time that she carried the Holy Child. Matthew 2, 2 says, Sam, where is he that, now, 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 this is the king, Harold, looking for the child, because he has heard through his men of the prophecy of this child. And the three kings have come to the king, and this is by way that he discovered that the child was indeed born. So he lied to the kings and asked the kings to come back and let him know where the child is so he can go back and worship the child. But he had no intentions on worshiping our Lord. He wanted to destroy Jesus. So this is why the Lord send the wise men a different direction so as not to come in contact with the evil king. Isn't it good when the Lord speaks to us either through a dream or otherwise and we listen? It is important to listen to whatever the Lord puts in your spirit. I was sitting on my bed this morning pondering over many things. And I was living in this particular area one time in 2004 and 5. And my father put it in my heart to anoint my sons. So I went to the nearest Christian store and I brought some holy oil. And late that night, while they slept, I blessed my sons putting oil on my forehead in the shape of a cross and blessed them. Not too long after this, I can't exactly tell you how many days or weeks it was after this, 
My oldest son had an incident in which he was chased home by a bunch of boys in this very not too favorable environment we were living in at the time. And through the help of others, he made it home safely. My youngest son also had an encounter and through the help of strangers, he too made it home safely. But I recall this morning how grateful I was that I anointed those boys. Had I not anointed them and blessed them as my Lord told me to, the outcome could have been worse. So always listen to your spirit when it tells you to do something because God knows your days. He knows your hour. He knows what is coming against thee. And when he speaks to you and tells you to do something, he is protecting you. So always listen to that inner spirit when it speaks to you. Because it can see more than you can see. Always remember that. Okay, back to the reading. So in Matthew 2.2 2, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Matthew 2, 3, when Harold the king had heard these things, he was troubled. He wasn't elated like the wise men. He was troubled. So that's why we knew he was troubled to the king. Okay, in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them, where Christ shall be born. Matthew 2, 5. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. Again, verse 2, 6 is all bold letterings. And thou, and thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not least among the priests of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor, that shall rule my people Israel. Then Harold, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent to them, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may go and worship him also. Liar. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly greatness, greatness. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, Frankenstein, and myrrh. Okay. Frankenstein is derived from the gummy saps that oozes out of the Boswellia tree. It literally just oozes out of the tree. And the uh, Comproflora trees, respectfully, when their bark is cut, both are edible and often chewed like gum. I didn't know that. <laughs> Extremely fragrant, particularly when burned. Sweet. Um, and truly scent, tiny, bitter odor. That's what it says. The Bible also says that we are not to take these fragrances that you would normally put together for the, the house of God and put it together for your own personal use because these things Put together for the use of service in the house of God is not to be used for your own personal perfume. 
If you fear God, you wouldn't dare do it. If you have no fear of God, then you may try it. And whatever come about towards you for doing that which you know you weren't supposed to do, you deserve it. Okay, Matthew 2, 16. Then Harold, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly warped and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coasts thereof from two year old and under, according to the time which he had diligently acquired of the wise men. So that was a terrible time on earth. A terrible time. And this is not the first time that a king has gone around assassinating boys, baby boys. This was an assassination. There was cries all over this world for mothers lost their sons that day. It happened again during the time of Moses. It happened again in other times in the Bible where the king would literally have the children cut out of the woman's belly. Cut out monstrosity. Read your Bible. It is more entertaining than any movie ever made by man. Okay, Matthew 2.17, then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, laminations and weeping and great moaning. Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they were not. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that his son reigned in Judah, Harold's son, in the room of his father, Harold, he was afraid to go titcher. Not, uh, notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee, and he came and dwelled in a city called Nazareth. But that's how he ended up in Nazareth. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, he should be called a Nazarite. All right. All right, um, and in the next chapter, you have his cousin, John the Baptist. Matthew 3, 2, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his uh, baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? <laughs> I love John the Baptist. He was a very unusual fellow. He wasn't a normal fellow like most of the people of his time. He didn't even dress like most of the people of his time. He didn't eat like most of the people of his time. He lived out in the wilderness. He wore rough clothing. And the only thing that we know he consumed was honey and locusts. So that's how I know locusts are good to eat. Very high in protein. Okay. Um, I have a couple words for you. You've heard uh, vipers. What are vipers? We have a generation full of vipers today. 
These are the ancestors of the vipers John the Baptist was talking to. But at least those vipers were, was, were religious vipers. These are godless ones. Okay. They are used generally to describe a, a spiteful, disloyal, and backstabbing person or generation. Spiteful, disobedient, disrespectful generation. Okay, purge to rid someone or something of an unwarnable, goal conditional feeling. Um, that's well. I think we're gonna stop at that today and go into the reading. Let me go back in. Highlight these and fold my page so we know where we can start again. Okay. All right, let me finish this one so, so that we can turn this page. Oh, yeah. Yes, let's finish this one. Matthew 3.10, I skipped 8 and 9. And now, also the axe is laid into the Root of the tree, therefore every tree which brings not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat unto the gardener, but he will burn up the shaft with the unquenchable ones. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized. <laughs> this is a comical part. But John forbid him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Matthew 3.15, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him not. Matthew 3.16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up stray away out of the wilderness water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. This was something that everyone saw. This was a visible thing that was seen by all. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This also was a voice heard by all those that were there. A mighty God indeed. Okay. We'll stop there. And I'll fold this page. Okay. Now let's do the reading for today. Oh, Father, where's my pocket? There it is. It is Psalms um, 9, of our beloved King David. He written it to the director of music. 
to the tone of the death of the Son, a psalm of David. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back, they stumble and perish before you. For you have upheld my right and my cause. You have sat on my throne, on your throne, judging righteously. You have rebuffed the nations and destroyed the wicked, amen. You have blotted out their names forever and ever. Endless ruins have overtaken the enemy. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. There is no memory of Sodom and Gomorrah at all. The Lord ranges forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He will judge the world in righteousness. He will govern the people with justice. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name will trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Amen. Sing praises to the Lord in throne in Zion. Proclaim among the nation what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers. He does not ignore the cries of the afflicted. Amen. O oh Lord, see how my enemies persecute me! Exclamation mark. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death, that I may declare your praises in the gates of the daughters of Zion, and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden, and this is what's going to happen to this generation. They are digging a pit. And they themselves will fall upon in it. Not one of the righteous of the land will fall behind them. So although it may seem like they're having their way in our world, it's just a deception. Let me repeat that. It is just a deception. The Lord is known by his justice. The wicked are ensnared by the works of their hands. In every generation, they will always be ensnared by that which they do by their deeds. And that includes this generation on earth today. The wicked return to the grave. All the nations that forget God. This is your reward. A fitting one indeed. But the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted ever perish. Arise, O Lord, let not man triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence, amen. Strike them with terror, O Lord. Let the nations know they are but what men. Mere men. Limit. With limit that is so small, it's not even worth counting or considering. Powerless. All right. Selah. Strike them with, ter with terror, O Lord. Let the nations know they are but men. Okay. So there's only so much we can do. But God is limitless in his ability to do whatever he pleases. Forevermore. Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Water. My name is Brenda Guerrero. And it's always made a peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you and all those you love. And may the will of God be manifested. As always, I encourage you to read your word, especially now that we are in the last days. We see a lot going on in our world that our ancestors did not see. 
right. our parents were not exposed to, their parents were not exposed to. This is a different world. It does not embrace traditional values. It is not a good world right now. But as I say to you before, the wicked of the land will never triumph over the righteous of the land in any generation, no matter what it looks like today. And however way our God chooses to correct the situation, it will be a justifiable way. Because he is a righteous God and everything he does is good. No matter how harsh it may be. So, what should you do? You should prepare your household and be among the sheep that will be on his right. Be among his sheep and not among his goats. They will be on the left. Alright, thank you for listening. I love you. But as I always tell you, God will always love you the most. Have a beautiful day and see you again.